Hello and welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. Today is going to be our second class in our series that we're doing on the secret of the seven laws of Noah. So let's say our prayer and let's do this. What do you say? Ruler of the universe, master of all masters, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy word, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor. That is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you would awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you, May you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as a realm of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit and light in our eyes and our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, Open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor for you, God, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Brandon, if you would, when we get about 10 minutes close to 7, just let me know. Or else it'll just keep going. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. And uh, let's, let's pick up where we left off, okay, from last week. Quick review, right? Quick review. The reason I'll, I'll probably start with this every time. Uh oh I'll probably start with this every time just so it gets ingrained, all right? So you have the three, you have the three C's. These are the three C's. Everything in Torah falls under the three C's. You have cerebral, you have culinary, and you have carnality. All right, and these, these become The 30, right? Now, this is the brain, and then you have the body, all right? And the reason I keep going to this is because when we get, and when, when when we get back into Hulan, this is going to become very important. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Etzadot Tovarah. And this is this this is this is the Etzadot Tovarah, but this is the Etzheim. The tree of life. Hi. Life is 18. This becomes very, very, very important because it pertains to the seven laws of Noah. It pertains to the secret of the seven laws of Noah. Because high, this is also part of eating a limb of a living animal. Living, life, chai, chai, aver chai. That's the Hebrew for a limb of a living animal. Becomes very important. So it's about spinal energy. Now in your spine, you have five lumbar vertebrae. You have 12 thoracic vertebrae. 
These are the 12 permutations of Havaya. And then you have seven cervical vertebrae. The seven vertebrae of your neck is what holds up your head. So the seven laws, it's what's holding up Atzilut. Now, the way the rabbis counted is anything up here is one. This is unification. It's one. That's why every law is a part of Keter. One, 620. You have your seven laws and your 613. Okay? So, five, uh, 12 plus uh, 5 is 17, and 1 is 18. Chai. So, anything you are in union with it's all spinal energy. What is the spine called in, in the garden? The nakash. Why? The nakash is the serpent. When he put Adam to sleep in his dormita, he removed his neural spinal network. That's how he put him to sleep. All right? So you have your, you have your spine. It's in an S curve. Your head's here, right? This is looking sideways. Looks like a serpent. This is the secret of the staff. Staff of Aaron, staff, all our staff class. This is the staff. And he will make the crooked straight okay this is the secret of being able to bend down where yud hey vav hey goes down and picks up the aleph dalid nun yud right this is the shema and the bowing the four bowings of the shema how many verses are in the shema 18 The, uh, uh, the Amidah. Amidah. Amidah, not the Shimon Eshrei, not the Amidah, sorry. I mean, not the Shema, but the Amidah, the Shimon Eshrei. 18 verses. It all becomes very important. How many wives did David have? 18. Within that 18, we know the singular, the singular contains the seven. So the seven is what's supporting everything. This becomes very important as we go along. All right? Now, I'm going to take that concept, and now we're going to expand Kabbalistically on it. What is above Keter? Here's our three. Keter, Chokmah, Bina, Da'at. We're now going to deal with Keter. What is above Keter? The Ian Sof. And the Ian Sof becomes or Ian Sof, which then comes to Adam Kadmon. Inside Adam Kadmon is three. Three things. The world of Akudim, the world of the bound. Remember the sheep that Jacob was tending. There was the bound sheep, the spotted sheep, and the striped sheep. That's the world of Akudim, the world of Nekudim, 
and the world of Barudin. Does, does, does that not look like this? And inside the world of Nekudim, we will now expand to the big board. This, I'm trying to get the glare here. Uh, yeah, that may help. This is a chart that we made 15 years ago. And I know on the video, the detail can't be picked out. So I'll try to go through it on the Peshat. Up here, I had the Ian Sof. I have Adam Kadmon, and these are the. This is the containment of the mind of Ak. You have Absog, Ma, and Ben. We studied the name Ma last week. From Ma, which is Yud Hey Vav Hey, the two Hays enter the world of Nekudim. When they enter the world of Nekudim of Sog and Ben, the light of the Yud hits them. And some of it refracts back, but some of it comes into the world of Nekudim and it shatters into seven vessels. Seven vessels. These seven vessels are the fallen sparks. The top three also shatter. And because this is feminine, these shatter and they become the Rapak, the Shak, and the Pardenim. Den is Guvaro on the female side. It's called judgment. All right? Now, these lights will eventually form people. Potiphar's wife, the Cushite woman and uh, Timna. Timna wanted to convert. Nobody would have her to reconnect. She was from Esau. Makes Amalekites. That's where the Amalekites are going to come from. That is going to. That's the whole destruction of the left. The par. The pardinim is where you get paradua. Paraduma, the red heifer. The red heifer was to mitigate that side. Now, the Rapak is Potiphar's wife in the Cushite. Joseph took care of Potiphar's wife, mitigating that. Moses took care of the Cushite woman. That's the backside of Zephora, mitigating that. These seven kings, these, this is what's called the primordial kings. This is, this is before Genesis chapter 1. These kings are the secret of Genesis 36. This king lived in days of the kings of Edom. Okay? Boom, 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 boom. Now, the eighth king, Mehetabel and Hadar, is Adam and Hava. And you can even, it even goes on to explain, Rabal explains, this is Solomon and Bathsheba, Bathsheba, okay? This is the world of Barudin, the third circle, the third world. So the, there's three primordial, and then there's ke the Keter of that, three primordial, and then you have the Keter of the next, and, and the three Cs, I'm trying to show you the symmetry. But within the center one is the seven kings all right and then in what's holding up the three c's is the seven laws as below so above but below is absolute in this in this uh example creation hasn't even been made yet Kings are kings are malchut kingdom, so these are the malchuts, the
the seven malchuts of the seven spherot of this world. Not of our of our typical world that's gonna Asiya that's gonna be down here where we are. That one's kind of losing its juice. These are gonna wind up being the seven laws for us down here. So I've explained that. I've explained that. And we're trying to get to that and how it applies to this world. Not to mention the garden and not to mention before the garden. This is how deep and far the seven laws are going to go back. They are eternal commands from the beginning of time, not the beginning of creation. All right? So there is our background. And don't ever forget our stick figure man. Don't ever forget that. Because when we conclude this class, that's going to make a lot of sense. I'm, I've got to save that till the very end of the class. And there's a good reason for it. Because I am concealing, I'm teaching the matter, but I'm also concealing the greatest secret that you will ever learn in Torah. The greatest secret you'll ever learn in Torah. But if, if, if I don't teach you the mechanics, if I don't teach you the mechanics, it won't make any sense why. I could just tell it to you, but you wouldn't know how to operate it, okay? You wouldn't know the metatronics behind it, okay? So, last time, we, we this is kind of where we started, and I'll just read it right quick. You don't have to turn there. The 30 pieces of silver, and then we went to the 15 pieces of silver, you know? And the 30 pieces of silver is in Hulan 92A4. There's 30, there, there, these 30 pieces of silver are alluded to the 30 righteous among the nations who merit the nations that makes the world exist. These are non-Jews that make the world exist. Why? The seven have to hold up the world. Who was the world created for? Abraham and his descendants. All right? So therefore, the entire world had to be offered the Torah. And if you remember, and everybody, if you have, um, uh oh, sorry, Glenn. Uh, if you have a Vodazara, this is book number 52. Turn to where we ended the class last week. Okay, before we go there, get your, get your Tanakh and turn to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. You see, once you get to 53, uh, 52, the first verse of 52 is the resurrection. The first words are, arise, arise. Mm -hmm. All right? So, 53 is after the resurrection. He's explaining why Israel was resurrected. 
because they suffered from the nations. That is not, this is not, that's not a prophecy about Yeshu because that's after the resurrection because chapter 43 is the judgment of the nations. As we read in Avodah Zorah 2 last week, remember? Esau comes in, Paran, uh, 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 Ishmael comes in. Those are So remember, you have your three circles. Mm -hmm. You have your three circles. This is going to be in an in eternal Torah ratio. Jacob, Ishmael, Esau, Islam, Judaism, and, Christ, and Christians, and yeah, that's the Messianics too, okay? This is the balance. These go far left, and these go far right. And in Isaiah 43, verse 9, is the judgment of the nations. So turn to Isaiah 43, verse 9. And it says, Were all the nations gathered together and all regimes assembled? Who is among them have declared this. Remember, Hashem's holding a Sefer Torah in his bosom, and they don't know if it's the King James Bible or the Quran. Remember this whole piece connect. All right? Here's the piece. Let us hear, uh, and let us hear early prophecies. Let them bring their witnesses. Remember, Edahin? Let them bring their witnesses, and they will be vindicated. Or else let them hear or let them hear them say it's true. Tor is true. You are my witnesses, the word of Hashem, and my servant whom I have chosen. That's Israel, who is his servant. So that you will know and believe in me and understand that I am he. Before me, nothing was created by a God, nor will there be after me. I am. Only I am Hashem, and there is no deliverer aside from me. He's having to explain to them, Yeshu and Allah, their men, you, you, you know, or, or, or Muhammad, are not going to deliver you. I have foretold and brought salvation and form you. There was no strange God in your midst. And it goes on. This is the peace. Now, Look at the verse in verse 7. It's very odd. It's in verse 7, right above it. Everyone is, everyone is called by my name who I, I have created. What is... Berea means created. This is the three lower dimensions. We call it, in, in Kabbalah, we call it Bia. Berea, Yitzira, Asiya, and this is at Lut. Okay? This is the world of Adam HaRishon and Adam Kadmon. Created. For my glory I have fashioned... Formation, fashioned. He's explaining the worlds here. And even perfected. This is this, is this world here. This is the, I have made. I created and formed you from the dust of the earth and made you. He's explaining creation right here. To liberate the people who are blind Though I have, though they have eyes and they have, uh, though they are, are deaf and have ears, he's trying to explain on Judgment Day. You people got ears and eyes, but you can't see. You don't know. 
Okay? Because this is that Bia is the world of the seven laws of Noah. It's the secret of the seven laws of Noah that hold up the world of Atzilut. Zechariah 14 in the last verse, and it comes and uh, comes to Atzal. When Adam caught Mon, feet hit the Evan Shtia, it says, and he's from Atzal, Atzilut. Okay? So now turn to Hosea. Hosea. And remember, I'll let y'all get there. Hosea 3. Thirteen thirty-five. If you got a Tanakh and the uh, Ark Scroll, so I've acquired for myself fifteen pieces of silver and a homer of barley and a leshek of barley. This is our thirty and our fifteen. Okay, this is where our thirty pieces of silver are, and the piece I just read from Hulan. Now look what it says in verse four. For many days the children will sit with no king, no officer, no sacrifice, no pillar, no ephod, no terrapin. Afterwards, the children of Israel will turn and seek Hashem their Elohim and David their king, and they will tremble for Hashem and for his goodness in the end of days. Is that not what we are? Now, let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. Here is the problem Hashem has with the people. Hear the words of Hashem, O children of Israel. For Hashem has a grievance of the inhabitants of the land. Malchut. Doesn't say he has a grievance with Israel, with Jerusalem, or with the children of Israel, but with the land, with the nations. For there is no truth, nor kindness, nor knowledge of the God of Hashem. Look what he just did. There's no truth. Uh, truth is truth is bina. Truth, truth is understanding. This is wisdom. Wisdom is hesed, loving kindness. The at is is and always does mean knowledge. All right? Why? Something has to hold that up. If you don't have the lower seven, you can't hold your head up. If you don't have the secret of the seven, you will not have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of anything in Torah. Keep reading. Rather, swearing, lying, murdering, robbery, adultery, they have breached the standards, and blood reaches more blood. There's your seven laws. Right there. Lying is adultery. Uh, lying is idolatry. Calling something that it's not. Okay? Breaching the standards, there's your civil laws. Uh, blood for blood is a uh, limb of a living animal. Life is in the blood. All right? Right here in our piece that we're studying Hulan, it's going to talk about the length of time that Israel is without king, sacrifice, temple, and everything. Why? He tells us why. Because the nations will not keep the seven mitzvahs Noah. Israel is the head. We are the body. If there is no body, there is no head. The head can't function. The head cannot do what it has to do. Why? Remember 
Remember this figure? Head of gold. Babylon. Arms of silver. Media Persia. This is Daniel. Chest of bronze. Uh, Greece. Legs of iron. Rome. Etzadot Tovara. One leg is iron is Ishmael. The other is Esau. This is Jacob. If you don't have legs, you don't have you can't stand. If you can't stand, you can't hold your head. This is the last two thousand years, because the legs are the longest part of the body. All right, it's always going to go back to the our map, our Nakash system. Now, go back to, now we are going to continue in uh, Avodazor here, I'm trying to find where I, Where I stopped here. It's got to be right in here. Okay. I stopped on page 2B3. And, I, and it talks about what is the unique situation between the Persians and the Romans. Why, why are they the ones that come in first? And why aren't the other nations mentioned? The answer is because the other nations have not subjugated Israel. The American Indians didn't have anything against Israel. Never attacked them once. Follow me? Only the Christians and Islam attack Israel. Because that's the back side. So here's what it says. For these regimes, the Gomorrah answers, these regimes, the Romans and Persians, will endure until the arrival of the Messiah. So the nations will attempt to defend themselves against God's charge that they did not involve themselves in Torah. They will say before him, Master of the universe. Now you've got to understand, this is judgment day, and they are arguing with God. They argue with you, that ain't nothing. They're going to argue with God. That's the arrogance of them. Think about it. Did you offer the Torah and did we ex refuse to accept it? No. No, we would have accepted. You never offered it to us. Now, there's a, now there is a, the, the Tanakh is, they put the Tanakh in the King James Bible, so it's in every house. They don't have an excuse. It's there. They reject it on purpose. Oh, no, the New Testament trumps that. That's old. That's, that's old mean God, right? It was never presented to us in the first place. That's their argument. The Gemara argues that this fact cannot be their defense since the Gentiles were, in fact, offered the Torah. But can you really say this? Why is it written? Now, so get your... Get your Tanakh and go to Deuteronomy 33. This is what God tells. This is what God tells the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 33. Verse 1, and this is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, bestowed upon the children of Israel before his death. Right before his death, this is what Moses is going to tell Israel. 
He said, Hashem came from Sinai, having shown forth to them from Seir and having appeared from Mount Paran and then approached the sum with some of the holy Midrads. In his right hand, he presented the fiery Torah to them. Indeed, you love the tribes greatly. All the holy ones were in your hands, for they planted themselves at your feet, bearing the yoke of utterances. The Torah that Moses commanded us in the heritage of the congregation of Jacob. What did he just say? The land of Esau is called Seir. And the land of Ishmael was Paran. He went to the Gentiles. Now, the now Gentiles. He went to Ishmael and he went to Esau and he said, will y'all accept my Torah? Ishmael said, it, can we steal? Because they love to steal land. The West Bank, Gaza, Hebron. They will claim anything is theirs. He goes, oh no, you can't steal. No theft. That's one of the laws. So then they said, we will not accept it. So then he goes to Esau. And they says, can we still kill? Oh, no, no, you can't. You cannot murder. Oh, can't murder? You mess with Esau, they will come kill you. Ask Ishmael. You don't think we'll start a war in a New York minute and go kill you? You, you come in and try to steal something from our house? You think Esau won't shoot you? We will. In a New York minute. They, he should have put New York minute in there. <laughs> All right? So Hashem comes to him and says, Oh, contraire, I did offer it. All right? Now, turn to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk's 13... 93. This is where Habakkuk, the prophet, is saying this again. God and three. And God came from the south, um, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, the glory of the heavens, and his praise fill the earth. And the Noga, the glow, was like the light in his hand to Israel, and his strength was revealed. He he is going to go in and he is and and this is also, uh, he's including Sa'ir in this. He's going to go through again. And, and the Hosea, I mean, uh, Habakkuk is reiterating this entire point again. But the Noga is those who accepted the seven laws. And the glory of the light filled the earth. All right? We're, we're not, there's really not no Noahides. You're a Nogahide. You're the glow of the light, right? So let's, let's continue. Um, little note here. The Persians subjugated the Jews in the air between the temples the, and, and the Roman general Titus thus exiled the Jews of Rome and destroyed the second temple. The exile has persisted until this present day. Rashi. And since other nations did not subjugate the Jews, they are the reason they will find favor in the eyes of Hashem. For it is written, and Hashem came from Sinai and shone forth to them, top of 2B4, from Sa'im, from Sa'ir, having appeared from Mount Sharon. It is also written, God came from the south. I just read that, Habakkuk, right? Mm -hmm. 
from the Holy One from Paran. Now, what did Hashem want with Seir, and what did he want with Paran? How do Seir and Paran relate to the giving of the Torah? Rav Yochanan said that the Holy One, blessed be he, brought the Torah around to every nation and every tongue, and they did not accept it until he came to the Jews, and they accepted it. Evidently, the other nations were offered the Torah. All right? Now, is, we're talking the 613, or the Ten Commandments, right? But the problem is, they wouldn't keep the seven. And even though they didn't keep the seven, they didn't want to keep the seven, which we're going to get into, he still offered them the 613. All right? Let's keep reading. The Gomorrah answers, rather, they will thus say, did we accept the Torah and then fail to observe the precepts? No, we were we never accepted the Torah in the first place. Uh, we never accepted the Torah in the first place, and thus were not obligated to observe the mitzvahs. I said, look, we didn't have we didn't have the seven, or we didn't do the seven, and now we're not we're not obligated to do that either. Why? Because they're they're not under the yoke of heaven, right? A yoke is when you're attached to something, not when you're, uh, a, it's a burden. They think of a yoke as something you carry. No, a yoke means you're attached as a partner. I'm yoked to him. The Gemara argues that this cannot be their defense since it is an inherent condemnation. But this is the very con con uh, contention lies their re refutation. For God will tell them, why, in fact, did, did you not accept the Torah in the first place? The Gomorrah concedes the point, therefore suggests that they will submit a different defense. Rather, this is what the other nations say before him. Master of the universe, did you tip the mountain over us as if it were an overturned vat? And did we nevertheless refuse it as you did with the Jew whom you coerced to accept the Torah? For it is written in regarding Mount Sinai, they stood at the foot of the mountain, literally at the bottom. Rav Demi Bar Hama said, that teaches that the Holy One, blessed be he, tipped the mountain and positioned it over the Jews as if they was an overturned vat. So here's what the, here's what, here's what the Christians in Islam are going to come say. Here's what you did to the Jews. You brought them to Mount Sinai and you held Sinai over them. This is, and this is one view in, in the oral tradition. And said, if you do not accept this Torah, I will drop this on you. And they said, oh, we'll do it. So the nations bring that as a proof text and say, that's coercion. Here's the key. Back to the board. The Gematria of Sulam ladder is the same as Sinai, the mountain. The spine is Jacob's ladder. And angels were ascending and descending stimulation from below mon from above coming mod coming down from above. They weren't Underneath Sinai, they were elevating in Sinai. Seven. Inside the seven is another seven. Ema, Bina. 
These are known as the mountains. These are known as the hills. Seven times seven is 49. Memtet, Metatron. And on the 50, 50 is Ima Bina. On the 50th day, the Torah was given. This is the ladder. And this is the mountain. And this is what we call counting the Omer. The 49 days from Pesach to the giving of the Torah. The sowed of the seven times the seven. The seven days of the week and the seven weeks. Because the seven is what holds it up. Before we go, continuing that, the Benish High says, regarding the seven mitzvahs, he goes, why are there seven? If you take the first seven letters of the Aleph Bet, it equals koach, power. Koach means power. Because the gematria of koach is 28. So, Aleph is one, Bet is two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven equals 28, which is koach, power. The seven laws are the power of God. Why? The Benishai continues. Because it is known that all 613 commandments, the energy of the other is contained in fractal form. All 16, they get their power from each other. They're the limbs of the seven. And the patriarchs fulfilled the seven properly. Do what? Turn to Genesis 26 and verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and observed my safeguards and my commandments and my decrees and my Torah, my Torahs, my Torahs, oral and written. The seven aren't just written, they're oral too. You have to know the entire oral tradition of the seven. Everything has an oral and a written, a male and female, a front and a back, a right and a left. Everything. This is the entirety of the Torah because the 613 is contained in the seven. That's why Bodhisattva says there's, there's a convert that keeps one law, no idolatry. There's another type of convert that keeps the seven laws. There's another that keeps the 30 up until Nevela. And then there's one that keeps all 613. It's showing you the pleroma of the whole matter. As it started from the top to the bottom, they're showing you from the bottom to the top. 
These are all converts. We call them gare. It's what the Talmud calls them. All right? The seven become important. So here's what the Benishai continues. Because it is written that the patriarchs kept the entire Torah. Well, how do they keep the entire Torah if there's only seven? Because they knew the seven branches into the 613. This, there's a, this book right here, of it's called The Seven Laws of Noah, written by Aaron Lichtenstein. He pulls out that the seven laws are really more than 30. They're 66 laws. And he goes through and sources it out. And what he says on, uh, in chapter 9, he says of the laws of theft, there are 16 laws in Torah that deal with theft. And of justice, there are 19 laws that deal with justice of the 613. Of homicide, there is one. Of illicit intercourse, there are 10. Of a limb of a living animal, there are two. Basic laws, just Peshat laws, not to mention the oral, the oral that goes with it. Of idolatry, there is 10. And of blasphemy, there is eight. That's 66. So we went from one to three, to the three C's that, are, that contain the 30, to the seven, but the seven contain the 66, and the 66 contain the 613. We're building the body of Adam, but the seven are holding up the head. You got 10. 10? Okay. We'll go, we're going to go over a little bit just to complete the thought. He says, how, Benish High says, how can it be? Because this operating system is holographic in nature. This is the Peshat. Therefore, it was the power, the koach of the seven, the seven letters, first seven letters of Torah. He says, then it's absolute. Therefore, when all of the seven and the 613 are contained, are these, these, are, are, are these based, they're all based in common energy and, and phase transmission. They're, they're, it's a phase, a transmission phase. Because seven and 613 equals 620, which is Keter, which is the top one. That's why I started there. The Leshem says, the Torah of the six, this is, this is known as the Torah of the 620, the 7 and the 613. Because there are 620 letters in the Ten Commandments. The 7 plus the 613. And if you move the letters of Keter around in order, you have Tav, which is 400, Resh, which is 200, and Kuf, Kuf which is 20. It spells the word Trak. Instead of Keter, if you put the T first, and then, then the R, then the K, it spells Trak. Now, what is Trak? It's gematria is 620. Keter. 620. Truck. What is truck? 
truck is of Golgotha. Now, this is going to be some high Kabbalah. Remember, we have Golgotha, the Keter of Keter, and the Malchut of Keter. The Malchut of Keter is Arich Anpin. The Keter of Keter is Atik Yomim. And, and we're going to call this the female aspect is Atika. Kadesha. This is known This is in Daniel. And he had a white beard sitting on the throne. 714. The Ancient of Days. That's the Ancient of Days. This is high up. Atikio Minas Ketra Ketra. This is known as the truck. Within the truck is. The three brains. These three brains are known as Golgotha, uh, Avir, Avira, and um, Mokus Dima'a. Mokus de Ma'a. Mokus de Ma'a is actually the Guru Rup, but So inside, inside Keter of Arik up to Atik is another three. Okay? Three C's. Remember from the Mokus de Ma'a? Remember that term we used to use, Botsina de Karinutsa, the black light? where all the denim come from. And the back side of that is Sam and Lil. Remember that? This is high up. This is high up stuff here. Nobody teaches that. He's talking about the seven laws here, guys. We've already went to Nekudim and proved the seven laws are in Nekudim. This is... In Atsilut of Barudim, in the mind of Arik, which is, this is really Adam in the garden, the mind of, of, of Arik and Atik that are the Keter of Adam in the garden is the other three that is called track that is the seven plus the 613. The seven laws are not only primordial, they're eternal. So are the 613. And if you don't do the seven, they can't do the 613 because it's the seven that holds it up. It's the power, it's the koak of the entire matter. You want to bring the shiok? Keep the seven. Let's continue. I'm not going to get in that. We've done detailed classes on all that, but that this is not the place. But you have to introduce it so you know how eternal and how high it actually is with the seven. These are associated with the Havarta, the cranial nerves of the brain, the three brains, the Gilgalta, the Avira, the Mokus Dima'a. This is the concealed brain that goes down and forms Hokma Bina Dot. The Kuzarim, the Kuzari, Yehuda Haleva, 
He died in 1080. He wrote a book. It's basically the methodology of Torah logic. He said they use biblical verses as methods of a fulcrum. So he's saying Jews use biblical verses as a fulcrum to move off of, like a compass. We call them sources. Here's the source. You can move off of this source, but you can't never pick your foot off of that source. It's your proof text. He's just writing it in an eloquent way. The, for instance, this is the secret of the seven Noahid laws. Seven laws, Sheva mitzvahs. Genesis 2.16. So turn to Genesis 2.16. I'm trying to show how old this is. Ready? 16. And Hashem Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Here's the seven laws right here. So here's what he says. The word commanded here, anytime God commands, that's a law. This is the civil laws. The word Hashem, Havayah, is where blasphemy comes from, which we're going to get to in Sanhedrin. Okay? The word Elohim is where idolatry comes from. The word man is where murder comes from. And, and saying is where the sexual sins or union comes from. Okay? And Hashem spoke to Moses saying. There's the union. Okay? Above and below. Because saying is the word amora. Love. That's where you get the word love from. Speaking softly. Spoke is harsh. He spoke, saying. Get it? Sp and, and Torah, the word speak, to speak is male, and the word to say is female. That's why it says spoke, saying. Hashem's making union with Israel. All right? So he, that's where the word, that's why saying is called union, or where the sexual sins come from. Every tree in the gun is theft, you can eat from every tree, but don't eat from this one because that's theft. Mm -hmm. Okay? You may eat is limb of a living animal. This is called asmakta, leaning on the verse. They would lean on this verse, the ancients would lean on this verse to remind them of the seven laws. This was where it started in Genesis 2. There is a wide difference between these laws and the verses. Yet Israel leaned on these verses as an understanding and a mnemonic to remember the laws, making it not only eloquent, but truthful. The Benishai says regarding Sanhedrin 56, which we will get into. We need an explanation why seven. Because through these seven, the world exists, as we have kept have we have been explaining for two days now. Because there are seven climates. There are seven seas, there's seven continents. There's seven days in the week that all stand on keeping the seven because keeping the seven 
makes the world exist. And we have now learned today, keeping the seven is what supports Israel, the head, so that they can exist to do the 16. It's, it's a partnership. And it's because they correspond to the seven primordial kings, which we've already explained. And because it, 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 it's, it's the mind of Adam, it's the mind of God, the Gugalta, the Avera, and the Mokas de Ma'a. It is also to guard against the seven forces of impurity because the Sitra Akra has seven names. The backside, there's a backside seven. In order that they should not be destroyed completely like the flood in Babel, the Tower of Babel. What's the Kasha? Why are there seven, why are these seven mitzvahs called from Noah? Noah didn't give them. They were in Genesis 2. Now, they were in Keter. They were in Nekudim. Why is it not called the, the Sheva Mitzvah's Adam HaRishon that commanded them in the first place? That For that, we could call them the laws of Adam Kadmon. We could, what we should do is call them the laws of Metatron how the whole system works. Because Adam was commanded with nine commandments in the God. These seven plus two more. Why nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, wait. Yeah, that's right. Seven, eight. No, one. So one, is the, one is the three. Ah. We have, we have Ketter. You don't count Ketter. Well, you don't count the odd, right? The odd hadn't fallen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth sphera is your sowed. You sowed, this is the spine. Because Eve is a tenth. The problem is this one and this one. There's our map again. Okay. This is going to be the secret of everything. This is going to be the secret of Passover. The secret of Sukkot. The secret of Rosh Hashanah. It's going to be the secret of everything and the secret of the seven. Because you can't eat the geed. Because Jacob was hit in the hip. But we know that the hip is really the growing. But they go deeper. It's in the spine. Because it's the nakash. The story of the wrestling of Jacob in the ladder is Adam fighting the nakash in the garden. And we're going to get there. It's going to blow your mind. All right? So these two are the issue. Which brings us back to seven. The first one, he was bidden, forbidden to eat meat in the gun. And the other one was tree of knowledge. Don't eat the da'at. Okay? Meets Guvarot. Tree of Knowledge is going to be Guvarot. Stay away from the Guvarot. After, after meat was permitted to Noah and his children, and the Da'at was not, had fallen, which is 
which is the clusters of grapes, right? The clusters of grapes. Remember from the first class, you have the three clusters of grapes that are going to be in Sanhedrin and in Hulan at the beginning of Hulan. Three clusters of grapes, which is the wine. You have the good wine, Shabbat wine, and you have the dregs, the dregs, the dregs of wine, the backside wine. Okay? So what's the first thing Adam, what's the first thing Noah tried to repair? The grapes and the wine. He knew exactly what he was doing. He got caught in the Guvarot. He was tr Noah knew the two. He had a sacrifice. He ate it. And he tried to fix the grapes, the wine. The Mohin of Adam. The 30 pieces of silver. The three C's. There are the three clusters of grapes in Hulan 91, which we'll, we will go, we're, that's where we're going to end. But we got to map it out. We're almost done. After the meat was permitted to Noah and his children, and the da'at was not, the tree of the vine was not there. Noah planted the vine and fell into the Guvarot. And then Ham exposed Netzach and Hod. And there we have the whole thing starting over again. This, it's only Adam and the Nakash. It's all that's happening. Now Noah and his children were left with the seven. Therefore, they're called the seven Sheva Mitzvahs Noah. The Tosvo says, Adam was not forbidden to eat meat, but to kill to eat meat. He could eat Nevela. That's why Nevela's part of the 30. The angels roasted the meat and fed wine to Adam and Hava. Mitigated. Guva wrote and wine. Guva wrote. In the garden, everything is mitigated. That's why he had nine. But the Nakash gets in, now you got an issue. Noah tries to fix the mitigation from the Moloch of the Guvarot in the Gan. That was what he was doing. The seven mitzvahs are holographic with the 613. The patriarchs held that the that the that they held them properly and considered them as if they had done all the 613 because the 613 are the roots. The seven are the roots of the 613. The uh, Rabbanya uh, Baraka says, the seven laws complete the 613 and make a complete crown for the kingdom, Mashiach. And the seven wisdoms complete the Torah, says the Gaona Vilna. These are the seven wisdoms, the seven sciences. We got to know our spine and our holography and our hierarchy and our dimensionality and all the science that we use in this class because that's the, that's the seven laws. They go with the seven laws, like geography, seven seas, the seven seas. It's all, it's all a part. And the Torah is amazing, and the sages are amazing, and we'll continue next week with the secrets of the seven laws of Noah.